Brian Laundry and his parents. Let's take a look into that. If you like the video, I hope you do like it. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And um, thank you very, very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So I'm watching all of this unfold just like you are. And let's face it, I don't think you need a psychic to tell you what's been going on here. But let's take a look at the cards and see what they say. And first, just a little refresher of what's going on. So I'm going to go through a timeline. I was going to look it up and write down a timeline myself, but I found this great timeline that was published by Eyewitness News, ABC, Channel 7 for New York, New Jersey, and Long Island. And uh, this is pretty comprehensive, so I'm just going to try to skim through that and not take too much time on it. So here we go. Hang on. Uh, Gabby Petito timeline, everything we know about her disappearance. That's from the uh, Eyewitness News. And this was published on Tuesday, October 12th, this uh, update, rather. So... Um, on July 2nd, 2020, they announced their engagement uh, on um, um, Instagram. So December 11th of 2020, the van is purchased, and they're calling it a garden on wheels. July 2nd, 2021, Petito and Laundry depart. So they've been in Blue Point, New York, where they're originally from. Uh, they're up there to celebrate her brother's graduation from high school. They departed New York on July 2nd, and they planned a four-month cross-country journey. So in uh, up ahead, then to July 4th through August 11th, the journey. Um, so on July 4th, they're in Monument Rock, Kansas. July 8th, they're in Colorado Springs, Colorado. July 10th, they're in uh, Great Sand Dunes National Park Preserve, Colorado. July 16th, they're in Zion National Park, Utah. Uh, July 21, they're in Bryce Canyon uh, National Park, Utah. July 26, they're in Mystic Hot Springs, Utah. July 29, they're in Canyonlands National Park, Utah. And on August 12th, they're in Arches National Park, Utah. Now, on August 12th, there's an altercation in Moab City, Utah. And as you know, they were described as having engaged in some sort of an altercation. All that was on the news, and we know what happened there. On August 17th through the 23rd, Brian flies to Florida. The Laundry family attorney confirmed that Brian flew home to Tampa from Salt Lake City on August 17th and flew back to Salt Lake City on August 23rd to rejoin Gabby. Uh, and then... Um, my goodness. On August 27th, um, they fight at a Wyoming uh, restaurant. A woman named Nina, uh, and I'll leave it at Nina, uh, says uh, she uh, saw uh, Laundry screaming at the hostess and Petito was in tears and apologizing. Uh, on August 30th, the last communication with the family. Uh, Petito's mother, Nicole Schmidt, said that the last text message she received from her daughter came on August 30th, where she said she was unsure if it was daughter or her daughter actually who sent those text messages. They were suspicious. One uh, clue was that uh, the text message referred to Gabby's uh, grandfather, Gabby referring to her grandfather by his first name instead of grandpa. So on September 1st, Laundry returns to Northport, allegedly returned to Northport home he and Petito shared with his parents on September 1st. That's Florida. Okay. Um, and the police said that he had driven the van there and Petito was not with him. September 11th, the family reports, Petito's family reports are missing. On September 15th, Laundry is named a person of interest. On uh, September 16th, Northport, Florida, press conference with his father and uh, the Petito family letter, which I'm not going to read aloud here. You can find it on, uh, you can Google it. Uh, September 16th, September 17th, uh, Laundry's sister speaks to Good Morning America. And that was a very interesting interview. If you haven't seen it, you should look it up. 
September 17th, no connection to the double a homicide case. This says, despite earlier speculation, authorities in Utah announced Friday that Petito's case has no connection and is not related to the double homicide case involving Crystal Turner and uh, Kylan Schulte. You remember, those are the two women that married and then were shot and killed. Uh, September 17th, the Laundry family reports Brian missing. September 18th, dual searches for Petito and Laundry. On, um, let's see, let's scoop ahead, scoot your head here. So on September 19th, Gabby's body is found in Wyoming. On September 20th, the Laundry family home is searched, and we saw that uh, on TV. On September 21st, the autop autopsy confirms uh, the body found is Gabby Petito. On September 22nd, divers joined the search for, laund for laundry uh, at a Florida nature park looking for laundry. Um, I want to see where is that because I'm from Florida and I would know where it, where it is probably. Um, but it doesn't tell me right away. So I'm going to drop that. On September 23rd, there's an arrest warrant issued for laundry. On September 25th, there's a reward offered for his arrest. But this is in, in relation to him taking money out of Gabby's account. On September 26th, mourners pay respects to Gabby Petito. On September 27th, Laundry's parents speak out saying they don't know where he is and they hope the FBI can locate him. On the 29th, Gabby Petito's family holds a news conference. On September 30th, uh, the FBI returns to the Laundry home in Florida, looking around a little bit more. On September 30th, uh, ABC News obtains phone calls, 46 pages of records from Northport Police for calls of service at the Laundry home from September 10th to September 27th. Wow. On October 1st, there's new body cam uh, video of Gabby Petito. And um, that was um, responding to um, domestic abuse, kind of. On October 5th, Gabby's family speaks out on local media. On October 5th, K Cassie Laundry speaks, uh, pleads for her brother to return home. And then on October 7th, Brian's dad joins the search, but some think that was just the FBI wanting to have some private time with him to, um, you know, talk to him. And October 12th, the coroner says Gabby Petito was strangled. So, and let's see if there's, and that seems to be the end of what uh, this news outlet has been able to publish. So let's look into this and see if we can get a little more information for the cards. So this is the Crow Tarot by M.J. Cullinan. I suppose that's how that's pronounced. And uh, they come in a really nice sturdy box. Um, if you got this as a gift, you feel like, you know, that was a nice gift. The uh, guidebook is pretty interesting. Uh, it has uh, good uh, suggestions on how to use these cards for divination. And then right in the back here, it talks about the artist and the author of Crow Tarot. And it just says that Margot Jones, so that is MJ in the MJ Cullinan, is a Seattle-based artist, writer, mother, and lover of all things magical, especially crow. She attended Parsons School of Design, yet her unique te uh, technique of telling stories through digital collage is self-taught and has been her passion for over 10 years. And I don't know that's as of when. Um, nature and its creatures are a familiar theme in MJ's work. However, having grown up in the south of Boston, her collages are heavily influenced by the energy of the city. Her work often merges the two worlds. Her path into the world of tarot was a beautiful accident that came out of a difficult time in her life. The process of creating crow tarot helped her rediscover her own wings, though at the time she didn't realize how life-changing the project would become. She simply fell in love with the process, the messages, and the feeling uh, each card revoked. The crow tarot, MJ's first published deck, has achieved a significant following and recognition with crow lovers and the tarot community. When MJ is not making art or writing for her crow tarot blog, Hmm. She's spending time with her daughter River, playing in nature, practicing magic, and finding new sources of inspiration. So I love that, to don't know a little bit about the artist. And uh, like I say, the descriptions here are useful in the divination, especially when so much thought has gone into the cards. The, the cards themselves are just really amazing, and I love using these cards a lot. They've got a sort of a, an antique uh, kind of patina to the cards. I mean, it's not really a patina because it's fake, but you can see how each card has a little warmness about it that kind of makes them uh, fun to use. And they're beautiful cards. And you know, what, the reason I do this is for those folks who don't get to see uh, full decks of tarot cards very often, at least this way you get a little preview of some of these cards. And uh, it's a nice way to uh, shuffle up the cards without damaging them. I like to keep my cards in good shape as long as I can. And, um, so that is the Crow Tarot. Okay, so this is going to be Brian Laundry and the Parents. 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 My goodness. So we go from being engaged for a year before they start that trip. You would think that she, uh, Gabby, would have you know, been aware of some issues, but 
I feel like this is heavily drug involved. So Brian and Gabby, this is issue caused by drugs. It was this issue, Brian and Gabby, is this a drug related issue? Is that how this started out? Brian and Gabby, is this a drug related issue? And uh, if that was going on, it didn't start at the beginning of that trip. It started while they're living in his parents' home. Brian La Laundry, when I say Landry, but Brian Laundry, just three cards. Was this whole thing drug uh, inspired? Uh, one, two, and three. Is this whole thing drug inspired? Okay, the signifier for this is the Four of Pentacles. You know, the Four of Pentacles is trying to hold on to your value, hold on to your worth, hold on to your money, which is not the case here because they were earning money, at least she was earning money for it to be spent in, in this trip. So holding on, I think this, holding on to your value, this for me represents, um, at some point, uh, Gabby trying to hold on to that relationship. The second card for this, the Wheel of Fortune. Wow, so this was just an unfortunate turn of the Wheel of Fortune. Third card, Queen of Cups, com being completely immersed in the emotional uh, involvement of the situation. So yeah, this is Gabby right here. This is Gabby trying to hold on to her worth. This was the Wheel of Fortune turning, um, which tells me it was always gonna happen this way. And it was uh, her getting so emotionally involved in that situation. So that's the first part. Um, uh, that's not to say it was her fault. That's just kind of where the mindsets were for that. Brian Laundry. But that didn't ask the question if it was drug involved. Okay, let's go back to that. I got so involved in the interpretation I didn't finish it up. So was this drug involved? One card. The Emperor. So what is the Emperor? The Emperor is in charge of this situation. Oh, okay, I know what this is. We're gonna have to get more cards. The Emperor is in charge of the situation. This is about domination. That's what this is about right here. This is speaking to uh, Brian. Uh, the next card to challenge that is going to be again, and this is Gabby trying to hold on to her value. So she's the challenge to him wanting to be in charge. And him being in charge may be that maybe he didn't want to be so tied down to her after this one full year, but he wanted to go on this trip. And oh boy, yeah, drug use, drug use. Next card, Ten of Pentacles. This is familiar wealth. Uh, this is really saying in a thing uh, all the value that uh, you perceive is going to have. Familial wealth. I don't think I'm going to put this down here. I think I'm going to put this right over here, for now anyway, and not turn this into a dyadic cross. Familiar wealth. So this is, in. Uh, you know what this is involving? This is involving all the money that was collected for this uh, trip. Okay? And you'll notice that there's only one major crow in this situation. There, there are other crows on the perimeter, but this one major crow seems to be the one who has gathered up all this familiar wealth. Interesting. One more card. And this is the Seven of Cups. Wow, so the Seven of Cups is gonna to speak to us of choices, visions, fantasy, unrealistic, and illusions. So it's illusion and delusion. And so poor Gabby is coming out in this and speaking. Uh, uh, now that she is where she is, she can see that this is all illusion. All of this was illusion and delusion. So this is uh, Brian as, as being in charge, Gabby holding on to the value of that uh, union that she wanted with him. Familiar wealth is she's the one that gathered all this money together, contributing to their familiar wealth. She bought the van. And then the Seven of, of Cups is, um, it's not really uh, illusion and delusion. It's more gosh fantasy unrealistic choices so this is what this had become and um, perhaps she thought that this trip would be the thing that cements that he's not having it let's uh, speak to brian in a full diet at cross right now and say it still does uh, illusion uh, the delusion could be the drugs. The cards are not wanting to speak to me about the drugs. Look at that. The Ten of Swords, which is a complete and utter downfall. So I might be pushing that issue. And so I'm going to drop it for now. Um, Brian. Brian, did you go into this knowing 
that you did not want to marry Gabby. So Brian, did you go into this knowing that you were never going to marry her? Brian, did you go into this knowing that you were never going to marry that girl? Six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Did you go into this knowing that you were never going to marry that girl? Signifier card for that is this Three of Pentacles. The Three of Pentacles. You know, the Three of Pentacles is actually, you know, working together for something on, for public display. So right off the bat, as a signifier, this tells me no, that these two are working towards something as a team. Just like these two quotes are doing. The challenge to that is the Fool. The Fool is a new journey. Okay, so the challenge to them working together was, in fact, this trip where you really find out who each other is when you're trapped in a car for a while. Face of this reading is the Ace of Cups, the whole thing was just flooded with emotion, and I think both ways. The whole situation was just flooded with emotion, and it, it started out like that. It was an offer of emotion. It was an offer of let's cement our relationship, sort of. Past of this reading is strength. Past of this reading, and I think it was a battle for the strength between the two of them. The sky of this reading, again, Brian comes up and says, no, I'm going to be the victor. I'm going to be the one who decides what's going to happen here. And the likely outcome is this uh, queen of wands. So this is a queen of uh, action, of making things happen. She had to feel like she was the one who was uh, directing the plans, making things happen. And that was just uh, something not uh, that Brian couldn't um, cope with. Now, the last part, I'm going to make it a full Celtic cross. These cards will only deal with drug use. I just keep coming back to that. For some reason, I'm just, I just feel that that can't be let go. So, drug use, signifier. Ah, so many issues coming together at the same time. So, I think this, this is all of these personal issues coming together, but it's one of these issues, drug use. That's what I want to know. Look at this card right here. Let's grab it. One of these issues, is it drug use? The Ace of Pentacles. A great big uh, uh, valuable uh, offer. Is it drug use? Okay. So uh, there's a struggle between the two of them to see who's going to be in charge. This is another card that popped out right here. I'm going to use it in the hopes of the fears the lovers. And this card came out in a previous reading I did for them. And it just reminds me right here, these two um, crows just look sad to me. They're picking at a heart. There's a serpent uh, moving it toward the sky and there are crows circling ahead, or above rather. So yeah, the fears is that this is just going to crumble. The lovers uh, were not going to make it. Drug use. Final outcome is the Ten of Cups is all of this uh, uh, happy family, rainbows and sunshine. So let me talk about it again, see if this makes something uh, clearer. So this Three of Pentacles is working together for something for public display. Okay, could this be a public display of their affections where uh, personally, behind the scenes, might not be exactly that. The uh, challenge to it was the fool starting on a new journey. And that's, in fact, what they were doing. So that's clear. The base of the reading is this great big emotional situation that it was with this big ace of cups. The past of this reading is the strength. And for me, that's the struggle of strength between the two of them. Um, yep. Uh, yes, sure is. I can just see if she's out, the one out earning money and he seems to have a sort of a macho image, this uh, struggle of strength could be an issue right here. The uh, sky of this reading is that he was going to be the emperor. There was just gonna, not going to be any question about that. And then the likely outcome of the first part of that was this queen of wands, which is her showing that, no, I'm going to be in charge. This is how we're going to do things. And anyone who's been in a, in a relationship can probably... Uh, an unhealthy relationship, at least, uh, understand this struggle. Uh, then I was trying to go down to drug use, but it just didn't pan out because it tells me here that um, we're dealing with all of these issues coming uh, at the same time uh, in the environment of this this great big struggle about who's worth we're talking about here. The lovers, uh, for me, this card, for them, is just a sad lover's card, okay? And in the sky of this reading, though, we end up with this Ten of Cups, which is um, just an emotional outpouring of, uh, usually this is a good outcome. I need a couple of cards to clarify that. Okay, let's take one. 
right here. Okay, this is a seven of wands, and the seven of wands is one crow up on the top with a wand that he's going to use to try to defeat all these uh, defeat all these other issues that are being dredged up. One more card is the page of swords, and so this is just a small offer of some sort of a justice, and that's what ended up um, being the downfall of Gabby. One more card. Look at this, it's, it's celebrations. It's the six of uh, wands, which are celebrations. This is not panning out. This isn't making sense. <gasps> oh my goodness. Are these celebrations the, okay, now I understand. These celebrations are the environment around when um, when these people are partying, and it's going to be a fun situation, and it's going to be a party, but what does it turn into? It turns into the Queen of Swords saying, no, I'm in charge, right back to, to this right here. I think it's a power struggle between the two, and I still am going to stick to this, even though this, this layout didn't strictly um, point that out, but I just intuitively feel this was fueled by drug use. Well, so that's what we get for Laundry and Gabby and the family and that whole mess. So, are any of you throwing cards on this? Why don't you let me know in the comments what you're coming up with? We can uh, create a conversation. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. Thank <laughs> you.